We deployed in August of 1970, and we were, we ran, what, like 60 missions? And we were shutting down to come home, and our, our CO decided he wanted to run one more mission, and we had 11 days left in country before we were scheduled. We were packing up. We were really ready to come home. And he says, oh, I just flew a VR. If I had a, say, visual, a visual reconnaissance. He flew on a helicopter. He said, there's enemy movement down there. Let's go. So we went to investigate it. We weren't <laughs> really there to Interact engage them. We were there to investigate and give that intelligence to the people who were going to replace us. That was the whole idea of this op. So that was the bullshit story we got. <laughs> but then what happened? So uh, we scramble. No, no, no. The first off, no, no. First off, we have a pre-op meeting. The pre-op is okay. We're going to insert here. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. This is the escape and evasion route, and you know, this is who's going to go on the uh, on the on the on the patrol. Who's going to go on the mission? and what position you're going to be operating in. At that point in time, after the, after the, uh, after the pre-op meeting, I was point man. I was always Grant Telfer's point man. So I was gonna run point, and Roland was gonna go, and, and Arroyo was gonna go, and some other people were gonna go. Well, after the pre-op meeting, this is a crucial part, Jim come up to me, and he was the point man for the other squad, for Richard's squad. And Jim, <laughs> he came up to me and says, do you mind if I run point today? And I said, sure, as long as I get to go on the op. I don't care who runs point. It's going to be our last op. We're just going to go out there and we're just going to investigate. Well, things turned to doo-doo after that. <laughs> it, it was our last op. <laughs> it was our last op. And I was supposed to go on R&R &R the next day. Oh. Uh, never got to go to Australia. <laughs> so anyhow, we board the helicopters and off we fly. I'll, I'll let Arroyo explain what happened next. So we're, we have, we, we fly in a slick. Are you familiar with that? It's an Army helicopter. And the Army had a little more powerful helicopters than the Navy had the Sea Wolf helicopters. And generally we fly with a gunship low at tree level. They're peppering the, softening the, tar the target area where we're going to land and a gunship high that's looking up, and we're in the middle, and then the slick would sloop down, and we just jump off, and that helicopter keeps going. So as we're coming down, we're leaning out the doors, ready to go out, and all of a sudden I felt, whack! I thought the propeller from the helicopter broke and hit me in the shoulder, and I reach over and I said, oh, I'm bleeding. And then somebody yells out. Hey. I was right next to him in the helicopter. I'm right. sitting him just like this, and the bullet hits him right here. It crossed my chest to hit him. Thank God. And thank God it wasn't a here yeah. or here or here, because I wouldn't be here. The only thing I thought, it was an amazing shot. It, yeah. was, the, it was an amazing shot. Two, two rounds that close together. So he took two oh, rounds oh, in the oh, shoulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so in that, we it, it, somebody yelled out, Arroyo's hit, Arroyo's hit. So the helicopter pilot pulls up, and we go back to the base. Well, everything should have been over then, but our, our commanding officer says we're going to go back in, our, right? Our fearless leader. <laughs> now, fear, he says, yeah. yeah, we're going back. Because you thought you, would have thought you were on your last mission, and he was like, no, 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 this is going to be your last mission. Well, and in all of our training, we have always told you never go back into where you just got shot up from because you're probably going to get shot up again. So They know you're coming. Yeah, they, they know you're going to be there. So they set up for you. And, and so anyhow, so we all... We, I'm, the, I'm not on I'm not going to tell your CEO to F off. No. <laughs> no. I, I'm off. I'm he, off. They put me back. I'm, I'm but, being... but, but he was the radio man. So we needed another person to take over the radio. Correct? Right. Okay, so he's off to... Uh, I'm on La La Land. I'm on, on uh, Heavenly Morphine. I'm like... Yeah, we well, shoot him up with morphine. And, 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 and so we go back and, and we need another person to be the radio man. So some people didn't know how to be the radio man or didn't want to be the radio man. And so our second in command, which is Tom Richards... Our XO. Yeah. X, XO. He, he decides, well, if we're going to go back... I'll take the radio. 
Now, you have to understand our XO, Tom Richards, is huge. He's a big guy. They call him the Hulk. Big man. He was, he was a weightlifter at Villanova College. He is a big dude. Olympic. 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 Oh, no, no, he's bigger than Mike Thornton. Oh, yes. We all shipped our gear when we go over, because we went over on a, on a VR-21 airplane, just dedicated to the SEALs. What do you think Tom Richards, who became an admiral, ships over as his personal equipment? Freaking barbells and weights. <laughs> he took about 500 pounds of weights. I don't think he ever used them. So anyhow, to make a long story short, now we all board the helicopter again. Arroyo's in, in medevac, uh, not medevac, but he's in the hospital, or what hospital we had. With the, the, the infirmary or whatever you want to call it. So six of us get back on the helicopter. We have Roland. We have uh, Grant Telfer, which is our CO. We have our XO, which is second, which is a, a walking third in line. I'm walking fourth in line because when Roland said that he wanted to run point, I said, sure, go ahead. So I said, I wanted to go on the op. So I got to go on the op. What to do? <laughs> and then we had an automatic weapons, which was Don Futrell. And then we had rear security with Wendell Hedge. So we get on the ground. Or did we actually take some fire before we get on the ground. Well, we get on the ground and you can go from there. Yeah, Telford, he's got it on a dike line. Okay, let's move out. So I'm talking down the dike line. A little weapons fire here and there, nothing real serious. And then uh, he calls, you know, halt. So our initial, first thing we do when we stop is we kneel down, make a smaller target. And when he said move out, I stood up and I got nailed. Right in the groin, excuse my French. Right. Fraction above <laughs> his very special private part. <laughs> And, to, and, and now I meet him in the hospital. At, at the next day, we were all in the hospital together. Well, let me finish my story. Well, yeah, just, yeah let's and get to that. Yeah, you're, you're jumping ahead. You're, you're five chapters ahead. Yeah, I shot my ammo, what I had left, and I wrapped my stoner around me, and I started crawling back, and then I got shot in the back as I was crawling, and then I don't remember anything. What? Okay, no. <laughs> I'm the only one that's, well, I'm one of two that didn't get shot. Okay, so anyhow, Roland's down. Milliseconds after Roland, get, I mean, uh, yeah, Jim gets hit. Telford gets hit. He gets hit in the in the leg. Both legs. Both, yeah. legs. Both legs. It goes up one leg. It ends up in this leg. So he's down. I and mean, this is milliseconds. And then and then, the XO, uh, Tom Richards, which is carrying the radio, which is communicating with the helicopter people that are supposed to be saving our ass, he gets shot. But well, he gets shot in the hand. He's got his, his, his stoner, his weapon, 5.56 five, submachine gun. He gets shot in the hand, but he can still use the radio. I'm next guy. I don't get shot at all. The next guy gets two right below the heart. And then uh, Wendell, I yell out at Wendell. I said, Wendell, are you hit? Because I, I thought everybody was down but me. And I never heard back from Wendell. So anyhow... I yell out to Tom, which is right next to me. I says, I'll get, I'll get Telfer. So in other words, there was wounded, 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 me. So I wanted to get the second guy wounded so I could get him off so Richards could get uh, uh, tell, uh, uh, Jim off and pull him into a safer area. So I got Grant and I pulled him down the dike line and Grant insisted he wanted to shoot the 40 mic mic off. And I'm standing on the dike line. And I said, shoot that freaking thing because I'm going to get shot. So he pops a 40, uh, a 40 mic grenade out at the enemy and everything. So I pull, I pull Grant into a, a, less, a less dangerous position. I'll just put it that way. And Richards goes after a, a Jim. So he pulls Jim to a less dangerous position and I'm still on the dike line shooting because I have to lay down a base of fire so all these guys can do whatever they're doing well as all that's going on Tom is taking all the wounded and he's pulling them back towards where the, the, the helicopter could possibly land well meanwhile I'm on the dike line and I see two guys and they're 
they're trying to set up a, uh, a, a large machine gun, which would take out the helicopters. So I, I disabled them. I didn't kill them, but I got them where they weren't going to be shooting the machine gun. I think I wounded them. I don't know what I did, but they didn't, they didn't fulfill their mission. So anyhow, Tom gets everybody back to a safe position, and then helicopters come in. Well, meanwhile, while all that's going on, a basic load for me is 750 rounds. I have 150 rounds in a drum, and I carry 600 rounds in bandolero. I'm out of bullets. We get, oh yeah, but we get bullets from Richards. Richards got shot in the hand, but it went through his, his stoner, and his stoner is malfunctioned. So he's got all these bullets, but he can't shoot them. <laughs> so, so we're getting bullets from Tom, and Wendell's getting bullets from Tom, and we're trying to lay down a base of fire, keeping everybody back there. The intelligence, when the intelligence came out, it was 60 to 80 against six. Yeah, so we were in a shithole. So anyhow, so Richards, the, the, hell, the, the slick actually comes back, and Richards, which is shot in one hand, but he's a weightlifter, Villanova, he picks guys up and he's putting them in the helicopter, just like that. Yeah, that's not well, even funny. The funny is, we were all out of ammo, so they started throwing the guns in first. And they were all hot as hell. Oh, oh yeah. And then they threw Telfer in on top of them. And me on top of Telfer, and he was going, ah! And I was laughing my ass off because somebody gave me a shot of morphine, so I thought it was pretty damn So, So, anyhow, Richards is loading, Richards and Hedge is loading the wounded people onto the helicopter. Well, meanwhile, I'm still on the dike line trying to keep those people back there and so we can get the fuck out of there. Excuse my language. So, so anyhow, so uh, when, when, when Futrell went down, when Don went down, he was carrying an M60. He was carrying our heavy machine gun. Well, he, he got two below the heart. He drops his machine gun. He's down. He's out. D didn't die, though. Didn't die. So I end up picking up his 60 and I got a stoner, and I'm shooting a stoner, carrying a 60, trying to get the hell out of there. Well, I'm in front of the helicopter, and the helicopter's getting pelted with bullets. And so everybody gets in the helicopter, and I'm still outside. And so I come around, and I throw the 60 in there. Now they're hot now, and I throw my stoner in, and the people are going, you're burning me, you're burning me. And I, I go, so I take one split second, and I said, I need to look around, make sure everybody's aboard, and make sure all the guns are aboard. We don't leave any guns there. So I turn around and I look. Everything's fine, and I look. Helicopter's not there. I literally have to jump up and grab the skid of the helicopter, and I flew out of there holding onto the skid of the helicopter. And they're shooting at me, 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 me. They didn't hit me. And then I. I told myself, hey, we're, we're in shape, we're, we're not like we are now, but <laughs> I pulled myself up on the skid, I got my, my foot hooked, I literally thought I was going to have to ride the helicopter on the skid all the way back to the base, but then I managed to see the, the there was a, there, well, he does, he does, but I got a hold of the, uh, the bench leg, the bench leg is secured to the floor of the helicopter, so I got a hold of that, when I got a hold of that, I, I lifted myself up, and then the Hulk grabs me right back of the shirt and goes, yeah, get in here, Lord, <laughs> and pulls me and puts me right in. We go back to the base, and we have a couple of beers. And I was told later that the entire operation took 28 minutes. It felt like 12. It felt like 28 days. <laughs> they had no idea how long the operation took because we had our 50th platoon reunion which coincided with the 60th anniversary of, CO2, of the creation of CO2-1 back in 22. We went out to Coronado just for the, the reunion. And then the Navy canceled the, the whole celebration for the SEAL team because, I can't say that officially, but a lot of the SEALs didn't want to get COVID shots. So I think it was the Navy's way to get back at, at the SEALs. And they canceled our reunion. But we had our own patrol reunion of the 14-man platoon deployment, there were 11 of us still alive, and so we and we had 11 guys there. We 
we, we talked about it. And, and we had the helicopter. That's where I was going. We had the helicopter the, pilot. The Sea Wolf pilot who flew on the mission. Carl Nelson. Yeah. He, he met us and he arranged on, on the Midway. We had this reunion on the Midway. And he gave us a magnificent tour of the Midway. Because we're not ship people, so we don't know anything. Although he was a ship guy. So we wanted to know, like, how long did this operation... Because you don't know. You know, it's a set piece. There's too much like, happening too fast. You have no, you have no concept of time. What seems like second, you, in other missions, like he says, the barrels were hot and the guns because you just shoot. You want fire supremacy. You want the other the bad guy keep their heads down and stop shooting at you. So you want to lay down or feel the fire. So the weapon, I don't know if you're familiar with a stoner. That's the weapon of choice, unique at the time, only to Navy SEALs. It, it's basically. To simplify it, it's an M16, but instead of having a magazine, it's a, it's a belt fed. It's belt fed. It's like a little, like an M60. It's a baby M60, which gives us much more firepower with more bullets because the bullets are lighter than an M60 bullet. It's a smaller bullet, so you, like our M60 guy, he couldn't carry all the bullets that he needed. So we'd have to carry extra bullets for him. Sometimes you have to carry an extra barrel because that barrel got so hot. He had to switch barrels to shoot. So we get on the helicopter at the reunion, and Carl Nelson, the Sea Wolf pilot, he, he starts to tell us what really happened because he was he was there. So like the, usually you fly with three helicopters. His wingman got stuck in the mud. The the rotor wash brought him down instead of picking him up, and he was stuck in the mud. So, he so we only had one combat helicopter. He couldn't give him cover. Only one could give him cover. Oh, right. And then finally. When they get extracted, he told us what happened. Somehow, the wingman was able to get out of yeah. the mud. Because the helicopters, for some reason, the aerodynamics, instead of going up, it went down. And once you're down and you're stuck in the mud, you, it's hard to get out. Yeah. So he had a he had a rocket, he said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he had the rocket. You guys have had platoon reunions, but how often do you see each other? Not enough. Not enough. Yeah. Not enough, yeah. So what's this trip like? Yeah, this is fantastic. Just, yeah, it's, it's absolutely it's fantastic really to see all these people that we know. We know 99% of them, yeah. Here's a picture of him. For what you guys have experienced and then kind of coming here, because I'm sure, like you said, you think about that day a lot. or do not anymore. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, we we yeah, do. It's, 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 it's quite emotional to, to get back together. Like one of the other platoon guys, who didn't go on this mission, Dan Peterson, he's around here somewhere. We took a motorcycle trip and we rode up the Dalton Pass up from Anchorage up to, to Prudhoe Bay in Alaska, and that was a blast. You know, we still do crazy things in our old age. We have, we have good, great camaraderie that is put there. Admiral Rich, oh, okay, Tom Richards, the guy I spoke about earlier, he got shot in the hand, he ended up becoming an admiral. And he was supposed to be here, but he's sick right now. Yeah. And Show he, the picture. And he's, he's sick because he can't be here. <laughs> and he wanted to be here so bad. So, so it, it was That's it. how important this, this trip is and how important your platoon was living through that day and what you guys survived. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things I think that makes us... we are There was we, no quitting anybody. Like you heard her say that... the. The classes, the BUDS classes, basic underwater demonstration SEAL training, the classes that are here were from class 6 to 61. To 61. So we were... We were 55, 55, 54. 55, 54, and 53. And not only did we go to training together, we got assigned to the same platoon. So we knew each other from training. Yeah. And, you know, I you don't leave anyone behind. Nobody That's right. You don't leave like, anybody behind. The training was so intense. Like, I feel for like I have a lot of Vietnam veterans in my chapter, and they went to Army basic training, and then they get deployed. They got sent to Vietnam. We lived together. We we knew how we smelled good, how we stank, how we sweat. We got drunk together. Yeah. <laughs> so we we knew like we didn't have to like communicate. We could just almost telepathically connect. Everything you do is by training. Yeah. Train, 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 train. I knew when this guy went down, I had to do this. I knew when multiple people go down, I got to cover. I got to cover fire for these people because if not, if I just decide to dilly-dally over here, these people are going to die. 